We're back to Authors Corner on the Total Education Network again. TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Total Tutor. And uh, Authors Corner is a lot of fun, especially when you put a mixture of a celebrity and a New York Times bestselling author. Sometimes people say a celebrity is a New York Times bestselling author, but this guy definitely is a celebrity as well. So I want to welcome the program Jeffrey Hazlett. He is the author of Running the Gauntlet. He's a New York Times bestselling author, Amazon bestselling author, and host of C-Suite for, on Bloomberg TV. Jeffrey, thanks for calling. Well, thank you for having me, and I really appreciate taking the time. So it's really nice. We can kind of use your interview for our celebrity show and our author show because of your, your expertise in both areas, for sure. So tell us, tell our audience a little bit about your background, especially about the TV show, and then we'll get right into the book. Well, the TV show itself is about me going into the C-suite. You know, 99% of the people who actually work in a corporation never get to walk into the C-suite. That is, to go see all the officers of the company. And the premise of my show is, is I see something we want to talk about, and then I go and talk to the entire C-suite, or I don't go see them. And I ask them some really hard questions about their business, what's going on, why do they do something, you know, what was that bonehead move about, or, you know, what is it you're doing that's right, and why, and what we can learn. And, and that's really what it's about. Uh, you know, I'm a former C-suite executive myself, a former chief marketing officer of Fortune 100 company, but I've also run small businesses. I've bought, you know, over 250 businesses in my career. And you know over twenty five billion dollars worth of transactions. So, but you know I know what it's like. I'm from South Dakota originally, and uh, you know know what it's like to, to push a broom, clean a toilet, and at the same time run a big business. And I, I think that that's so important. And I guess you learn through going up the ladder in life and saying to yourself, you know, learn what every job entails in your business because you never know. And that's where I, I think what you're talking about is the ins and outs is where the mistakes are made in so many ways, Jeff. Well, I mean, I was talking about that today on the show on Bloomberg this morning. We were talking about, you know, some of the Apple executives that have gone on to other companies and they haven't been very successful. And I was speaking to one particular, Ron Johnson, you know, I think is a really nice guy, but he went on and became the CEO of J.C. Penney. Well, you know, he never adapted to the culture of the company, nor did he do the things I think he needed to do. I mean, this is the guy that invented the genius bar. But he never brought any genius to J.C. Penney's. And, and here they were going down and going down. And I said, look, if it was James Cash Penny, that's his name, James Cash Penny. There's two things. One, he would be back in the back of the store in a cot making sure it worked. And this guy was living, you know, a thousand miles away right. and then commuting, commuting on the corporate plane. I mean, you, you can't do that. You need to, you know, go in and live and be a part of the people you're working with. And, and and show that you care, and, and I said that was a big big mistake, and then and then just didn't understand the the C in J C Penny. It's about cash. It's about coupons. It's about sales. It's about yes. retail, and and he just tried to do it a little differently. And and I think people make you know I think people make bonehead moves not because they want to, just because they don't think it through. Yeah, they they make the bonehead moves because they think they're going to go buy the book, but they don't look at common sense. Business is common sense. If you're not selling, there's you're doing something wrong. And I think that that's the premise of the book, Running the Gauntlet. Look, You have to look at making changes to make your business shine because every business is not going to make billions. And if, it, if it's a startup, for sure, but even if it's a corporation, at times we have to reinvent ourselves. So I think that's so important, the premise of that book. Yeah, I think, well, you always have to be reinventing yourself. I mean, and, we, and it's tough. I mean, I've owned, you know, printing businesses and a number of other businesses in my past, and, and I always like to set it up so we do it the same way every time. But you, by the time you set it up is when you should be breaking it. You know, what can you do to continually improve it? And that's really what it's about. Adapt, change, or die. There's really no other choice. And, and, and I mean, it's, it's that simple from the, when we walked out of the primary primordial sea, you know, and, and we adapted and we changed and then we became who we are today. And we're continuing to change, Just but businesses are the exact same way. Oh, and that's, that's so true. So here's the problem a lot of times is a lot of businesses are happy where they are and, they're, and they, 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 the failure is that they don't make that change. Why is that? What, what do you think the reason is that people are not willing to make changes? Well, in the book, I talk about five of them, but I think one of the biggest ones were just adverse to risk for the most part. Most people are afraid, you know, and what, what's the worst thing that's going to happen to you in business if, you know, is you're, you're not going to die. If you make a mistake, most people are going to die. Now, it 
you know, don't if you're listen, if you're a heart surgeon, you're operating heavy machinery, it's a little different, guys. You know, pay attention. But, but by and large, most people in business, you, you make a mistake, no one's going to die, and most customers will forgive you of great sins if you're trying hard. And I, I just think you just have to wake up every morning. So that I don't. I just don't want to be stupid and go out and try to do the right things. And do the right things. And so people are afraid of risk and a risk reward. And you kind of now make that as analysis and through the process. And I guess talking to everyone in your company is an important thing before making a, a move, especially if you're a corporation with your board of directors and saying, well, or with your board and saying, you know, we might have to go this route. Is this the right thing to do before jumping to conclusions? Because a lot of times people just run and do something without any research involved. Not well, and I involved. think the other piece of it you kind of hit on a second ago was what's, what, with that risk, you know, there's reward, but let's create the tension. You know, there's an old saying in sports, no pain, no gain. We all know that. Then why, why are we adverse? And most corporations now are trying not to create tension. Yet that's the one thing you should create. The tension that drives healthy debate. The healthy debate drives a better outcome. And it gets us talking about how we can do things better and the way in which we're going to do it. So I want the tension between sales and marketing. I want the tension between sales and marketing and legal. And I want the tension between sales, marketing, and legal and HR and then finance and then every single aspect of the company because the tension that you have, that creative tension, creates the kinds yes. of things that are going to move your company. And, and I like when we're looking at some of the points of the book. One is develop a takeover mentality. And I'm an, I'm just, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, Jeff, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a small business entrepreneur, but if I have that mentality in so many ways that I'm going to succeed, you have a lot of m- better opportunities of success. If you don't have that, well, this isn't going to work, and they and I go and try it, nine <laughs> times out of ten, it's going to fail, right? you got to have well, that. Exactly, and I love those people say, well, we tried that before. Well, try it again, you know? <laughs> so if it makes sense, it should work. Now, maybe the timing's off. The scale's off. I mean, maybe your message is off a little bit. But if it makes sense, why would, why won't it work? So what do you got to do? You got to do something to get it right. And so you just keep working until you get it done. I, it's just, I, you know, you can't make this hard. And, and we, try to, we try to make things overly complicated sometimes when it really shouldn't be. And, you know, we're basically there to sell something that somebody wants, and we want to extract as much value to as many people as possible so that we can get richer. And, and that building wealth for our families is part of what we want to do. We're talking to New York Times bestselling author, uh, host of C-Suite on Bloomberg Television, Jeffrey Hazlett. And it's really an interesting conversation about his book, Running the Gauntlet. And I think that through this conversation a lot of times, is it difficult, especially when you consult people and you talk to people to say you have to have that mentality? You have to be willing to make a driving change in your business to have success. How many of them say, well, or they, they, they're, I guess they're, they're the naysayers that already predict something's going to happen before it happens. And how do you kind of consult them in a way to say you should tr- definitely do this? Well, and, the, and there's two things. I don't think you can consult them to do it unless they want to. That's right. one. And then, but in the front of my book, I actually put to the naysayers, opportunists, obstructionists, who stand in the way of driving progress and change in a court organization, no, we will beat you, because there's a special breed of people who, who do drive this. And, you know, when I sell services to other companies to consult to them outside of my books and the television show, I, I tell people I only work with high-growth companies. If someone has to ask me what a high-growth company is, I know that they don't know, and I don't want to work with them. And then, or they spend the next half hour telling me why they're a high growth company, which convinces them they want to work with me. So, you know, you really got to figure out what your value proposition is and throw it out there and be able to be very clear. But I, my opinion is, is that, you know, it, it's a special breed of people who are high growth. That's why you only see so many of them. Right, exactly. So there's a certain mentality that you talked about, the takeover mentality. But as an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur, Jeff, is it we have this thought process that, you know what, the, the, the risk involved, we see so many small businesses fail. And this is where I think they need to definitely pick up this book, especially if they're an entrepreneur that are, that's struggling or, or is running a business in some sort of aspect and, and just really doesn't want to take the bull by their horns. And they're not willing to try different things. What what makes us tick in a way to say, you know what, we enjoy this. We enjoy the everyday craziness, but we have a plan and action and, and to kind of... Well, and that's really what an entrepreneur is. And typically, you know, entrepreneurs go through state, through three 
distinct stages. They always have them. You know, you start off as a, a one-man band, then you add these developed followers, and then you start to add the skilled technicians and, and, and professionals that you need in your business as you grow it and scale it. But you, you, you really don't know that it can't, one, it can't be done, and you won't accept anything other than it will get done. And, and it might take you more time. You know, it's like I wanted to be host of my own television show, and I said, I'm going to go do it. Well, you know, it took me three years. Okay, <laughs> yeah. well, I really wanted it in the first two days. Well, so it just took me a little longer, but I knew I was going to get it, and I was going to get it on my terms. And I just never stopped until I did it. And so, and, and that's what, you know, that's what a real entrepreneur does. They just know this is what we're going to get, and I'm not settling for anything less than that perfection. And that, and that's the great thing when you said the perfection. You set these goals for yourself, and you want to make that driving change, and you you, you have that vision to do it. You got to go out and do it. Uh, you know how many people, and, and I, I consult with businesses as well, and interview tons of people. Oh uh, well, I'm going to do this, and I, I have a great plan. They have the plan to do it, Jeff, but they don't deliver. And I think that that's I, where I see that a lot with with speakers and authors, quite frankly, who want the fame and fortune but don't want to do the things. That you have to. So they, a lot of people are, are in what I call the story of the things that they want, but never into the doing of the things that they want. And there's a big difference between the story and doing. And those that do, and there are a number of us that do, you know, we become the stories themselves, the success stories. But those people are all about wanting it, and they just never will do the things you need to do to get it. Well, how do you stay organized in that way to make sure that you do make that driving change? And I'm sure you talk about this in this book, but having someone as successful yourself on on this show, that it's not just an author doing it. You do it firsthand in your business, everyday life. Well, how, I, think it comes, I think it comes through, and I, I, I'm glad. That's a great question. I thank you for asking. I, I think it's because it's authentic. And I, you, you can tell people who are authentic. I mean, that's what a brand is, nothing but a promise delivered. And I think that comes through. I think it certainly comes through in my show because people constantly get hundreds of comments a day where people say, Jeff, love the way you keep it real. Because, you know, when someone's telling me that they don't care about the money and here they are, the CEO of a multinational corporation, I go, well, everyone that's listening to you is saying, BS, BS. Because you do care about the money. That's how we keep score, you know. And, 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 and I won't let them, you know, get away from that until I get that answer. So, you know, I think it's about being authentic and being real, and that comes through. And if you do that, you don't have to fake it, do you? And do you see a lot of times that hands-on is an important part of this process as well? You can't. Well, I, I, I mean, for me it is, but you know, for others, there are others that are really good delegators and and let people go out and do the things that they can do. It doesn't mean you can't be hands-on in terms of checking in and doing different things, just different levels of it. Doesn't mean you have to get down and wash the floors, but you can make sure you got good people who get it done for you. So if you're a small business right now, just afloat, and I'm thinking of this because you know how many people out here say you're like EF Hutton in a way Jeff on the show right now they want to hear this advice what advice would you offer them well figure out what it is you want to do and just and it's absolutely just let's go do it but you know understand understand the balance I you know I call this conditions of satisfaction you know for my own personal well-being I have three of them and whenever I have violated them you know or cheated on them um, I, 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 I'm not happy so there's three things for me. One, I want to build wealth for me and my family. Two, I want to have fun. And three, I want to grow professionally. Seriously, that's really the three simple rules I have for myself when it comes to doing things in business. And whenever I've, I've taken on client for the money, but I really didn't like them, I never had fun. You know, whenever I was in a company and it and, and I wasn't growing and right. it was just, you know, checking it off and going in there and basically saying, Yeah, I'm gonna get out of here till eight you know, who who wants to do that? You know, I wanna be there till ten, eleven o'clock at night. I wanna be doing it twenty four hours a day, you know, seven days a week. That I I wanna do it for free, basically. But I do wanna get get paid because that is how we keep score. But but the, my, my wife has said that a couple of times. She said, You do this for free and she's right, but let's don't tell everybody that. And then that's, I would say the same thing. It doesn't feel like work when you love doing, being an entrepreneur, if you're a true entrepreneur, you say, this is, I don't want to go work for anyone else. I want to be able to keep growing and, and going to the next level. Amazing things. You're a fantastic teacher, Jeff. That's why I see you were really good uh, with a TV show as well. I think that teachers are great as also uh, 
celebrities and 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 presenters. Well, I appreciate because, it because that's well, and I think the the thing you mentioned about me, which I think a lot of good people do, is that you do. I'm a doer, so I get it done. So I'm not afraid to do the things I do. And we all, even in my own office today, you know, uh, with small business that we have, even though we run a multi million dollar business with television and books and speaking and consulting and PR and and then now uh, our CEO and our C suite network. You know, we we you know we all do jobs. I mean, I clean the toilets. That's one of the things I want because I want people to say if he can clean the bathroom, I can help you know clean up around here. I can help take out the garbage, or I can do this or do that. And I think those are important lessons for people to see. Well, leaders serve, Jeff. And if you're if you're a leader and you're not serving and you're not doing doing leading by example, you're not going to have a successful business. So that's very, very important. So, Jeff, where can we find information on you, purchase your book, and learn more about you? Oh, well, I'm everywhere. Just Google me. <laughs> but it's, it's hazlett.com, H-A-Y-Z-L-E-T-T.com. Jeffrey Hazlett, look up the C-suite on Bloomberg. You'll find me there. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. You email me, and I'll get back to you. You can find me on Amazon. Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, everywhere. Well, I hope we can continue this conversation and create a good friendship because I, I, I see you as a definite person I need to talk to, a, a great mentor, and I, I just learned about you today, so I'm going to make sure I get I watch Bloomberg TV and watch you and definitely get the chance to read your book. So thanks again for calling, and with Jeff. with a face like this that deserves to be on television, everybody should be watching. <laughs> All right. Well, take care, Jeff. Good talking to you, man. All right. All right bye. Okay, bye-bye. You're listening to Author's Corner, and we'll be back in just a moment.